Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Megan and I will be your MC for today's event. This great land, Chibuktuk, is located in Mi'kma'ki, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. This territory is covered by the Treaties of Peace and Friendship, which Mi'kmaq, Wal Walstaquik, Passamaquoddy peoples first signed with the British Crown in 1726. <clears throat> to begin this morning, we have musician, poet, and professor Raymond Sewell of Pabano Na First Nation, who will open with a performance. Hello, all. Very excited when Pam uh, told me to come and open this. Uh, this takes place on the land. We have a relationship with the land uh, through treaties, but also uh, through sustenance. The land sustains us and we sustain the land. Uh, this is Nedugulim, so that understanding. So I'm always glad to come and share uh, a little bit of uh, Mi'kmaq philosophy. And, uh, uh, but I'd like to sing a song. We start everything back home with a song. I like to say I grew up in a musical of sorts, you know. Uh, and just to put out good energy there. So I'm so happy to be here to support Pam in this in Denver, it was hard to keep this secret, you know, so. <laughs> Thank you, Raymond, for such a beautiful performance. Now I would like to introduce you all to Councillor Pam Lovelace. Pam has been a member of Regional Council since 2020, following a 20-year career in communications and project management. She is only the fourth woman to hold the position of Deputy Mayor in the last three decades. After graduating from Mount St. Vincent University with a Bachelor of Arts, Honors Degree, and a Certificate in Business Administration, she worked for CBC Maritimes in Nova Scotia and New Brunswick, producing television and online programming. She also holds a Master's Degree in Education from Mount St. Vincent. Pam has experience working with all three orders of government in communications and project management, and has received many awards over the years for her commitment to her community. I've had the pleasure of knowing and working alongside Pam for the last three years. <clears throat> we met through the work that I do with Shelter Movers Nova Scotia, and the commitment that Pam has shown our organization is a testament to the type of person that she is. When you meet Pam, it becomes very clear to, um, to you that she isn't a typical politician and is always immersing herself in her community and supporting worthy causes. Whether she's advocating to end gender-based violence or fighting for inclusion and diversity, you can always count on Pam to amplify your voice and make change. Please join me in welcoming Pam to the stage. Wow, thank you, thank you so much. 
Merci beaucoup, Malaliag. Well, Aileen Raymond, that was beautiful. And thank you so much to Megan and my team for putting this event together today. I'm honored to be here in Mi'kma'ki, and I'm grateful to stand here below the pictures and beside these incredible women leaders. It's been a privilege to serve as the last counselor to represent Hammonds Plain St. Margaret's. I look forward to seeing more candidates step forward in the coming months to serve on Halifax Council. I want to thank Mount St. Vincent University for supporting this announcement today. This university played a pivotal role in my life, getting me on track in the 1990s after I left high school in grade 10. I left high school to start working full time at the age of 16. I had started working at the age of 13. And that's just one fact about me that's different from a typical politician. Look around the room today. <laughs> There's so many people that I am so grateful to have supporting me today. Labor, business, people from all parts of this municipality. I'm proud to be supported today by Tories, Liberals, New Democrats, and Greens. Now, sometimes we may disagree on things, but we all agree that Nova Scotia needs a strong capital city. And as a, str and as a strong capital city, we need a strong team and a strong mayor who will ensure that together we can build smarter, grow stronger, and live better. And so today, I'm proud to announce that I am running to be that mayor. Thank you. Thank you. I'm making this announcement today at a time when some women are leaving politics. And on a day today when we recognize missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls across this country. In 2026, we will be celebrating our 30th anniversary here as a regional municipality. And this region was formed out of big dreams and even bigger ambitions, that we could be more than just the sum of our parts, that we could be just more than a capital city for Nova Scotia. In fact, we are the urban core of Atlantic Canada, a leading municipality in the country with accolades from around the world a city that can compete and win against other cities for talent, innovation, and investment. We were right to dream, and we're still right to dream, but today that promise and potential, it's slipping away, not as the result of just one decision, but many smaller decisions made without collaboration, without community, without voices at the table, without consideration, of unintended consequences of all those decisions. And so the fact is that for the past 30 years, the direction of this city has been shaped not by all of us. The ways of the past have done little to help young families who have done everything right but can't even afford a place to live. It's not good enough for recent graduates looking to build their careers in a city that can't house them. And it's not good enough for newcomers who came to Halifax for a better, safer life. Well, it's not also, also, it's not good enough for those who are chasing their dreams to start a new business. But they can't get a fair deal. That's not good enough for Halifax, and it's not good enough for me. Today, I'm very proud to be joined by my husband, David, of 22 years, my daughter, Ava, she, she attends Mount St. Vincent University, but our 20-year-old son, Callum, he's on a plane right now, bound for Alberta. Instead of being here, he's looking for opportunities elsewhere. My family is just like yours. So many Nova Scotians know the ache of saying goodbye to a child or a grandchild who leaves for other opportunities. And once upon a time, our kids left because that's where the jobs were. But now, it's just become too expensive to find a home and start a family here in Halifax. Well, a capital city that lives up to its potential is a city of fewer goodbyes. And it's about time that our reality matched the rhetoric. 
and their performance lives up to our potential. Our challenge as a capital city is to build smarter, grow stronger, and live better. Now, you'll hear me talking a lot about those three, pil three pillars of, of my campaign, but it all starts with building smarter. And building smarter means, first and foremost, building more homes now. We need more than 8,000 units every year, because between 2018 and 2022, more than 50,000 people move to HRM. And that's great! But now we need at least eight new schools to address the overcrowding, many new recreation facilities, new emergency services, thousands and thousands of new homes. As your mayor, I will put an end to the finger pointing and blame games with provincial and federal governments. My message to the Premier and Prime Minister is, if you do your part to get the homes and the infrastructure built, I will be the first one leading the applause. But even more importantly, our partners will have confidence that Halifax is doing everything that it can, and I will pull every lever that I can to build more homes now, and particularly for young people, so they can afford to stay here in Halifax. Because affordable housing, it's not just a tagline. It's a lifeline. In order to keep communities healthy, vibrant, and safe, people need housing first. The cost of living crisis is hitting every aspect of our capital region. And while there are many solutions, they all begin with building more deeply affordable housing, adding more diversity to the housing stock, removing land use planning barriers, and helping people age in place by building complete communities. Housing is more than the building where you sleep. It's also the neighborhood where you live, work, and play. And as your mayor, I will secure long-term investments in public transit infrastructure so we can grow sustainably. And that's why the second pillar of my campaign is grow stronger. So it, that starts with building a resilient capital city in the face of a changing climate and changing economic times. The neighborhoods destroyed in last year's wildfire, well, they were in my district. And I saw firsthand the incredible heroism of firefighters and emergency responders and the deep pain of families who lost everything. And many are still struggling today. And as a mayor or a councillor, well, we're not frontline firefighters, but we can do more, and we must do more to act, prepare, and prevent future tragedies. That's the job I'm signing up for. And while on council, for the past uh, three and a half years, I worked with the province to secure tax relief for businesses destroyed by wildfire. I initiated the development of community connector roads across this region. I continue to advise provincial leaders to fix the Assessment Act so residents build, rebuilding their destroyed homes are not forced to pay more than double the property taxes as their neighbours who are fortunate not to lose their homes. Our pre-Confederation property tax system is not working. It is punishing those who have already lost so much and who work so hard. I work to get the 24-7 fire services for Western Halifax, where communities are growing at a very fast pace without the needed infrastructure. And I have worked hard as a regional councillor to push for change, not just for my district, but for the whole municipality and beyond. I will do everything I can to build climate and infrastructure resiliency and ensure that we are never again left so vulnerable. As your mayor, I will proudly build on HRM's track record of reducing emissions to fight climate change. I will push hard to protect our coastline, our wilderness area, and establish wildlife corridors. And of course, my council initiative to work with Parks Canada to create a national urban park. The economic and environmental benefits from a national urban park in HRM, well, they're immense. It will create jobs, become a new national tourism destination, protect biodiversity, and ensure that more Haligonians are nurtured 
by nature. I will work with all partners to ensure we develop a modern harbour plan to secure our global competitiveness and move forward quickly with all stakeholders to plan the next steps for the McKay Bridge rehabilitation. Now, this could take more than $2 billion in the next 15 years, but we must protect the $120 million of annual economic benefit that cross that bridge every year. Well, I think you know where I'm going with this. Municipalities need a better deal from our senior governments. We can't just keep handing over 30% of all property taxes collected in this municipality to the province. It's not sustainable. And we can't grow sustainably without addressing the infrastructure deficits. Wastewater, schools, recreation facilities, roads, bridges. Where will the next watershed be that will sustain doubling our population? This is important work that needs to be done now. I will make sure that we manage our municipal budgets better. I commit to streamlining the municipal budget process to establish certainty for taxpayers by creating multi-year operational budgets. Investments in our communities should not be based on political will. In fact, they should be based on reaching a population threshold, not a vote at Council. We must grow stronger. And finally, building a world-class city requires a leader who ensures that we can all live better. And this means building a capital city where everyone feels included and belongs. I stand here today as a champion of the potential of true economic reconciliation with, historic, with historically marginalized communities, Indigenous, Nova Scotian African communities. I am passionate about being an ally with these communities, but more so, I am passionate with being a partner with these communities every single day, because inclusion and equity they're not just measured by the words you use when the cameras are on. They are measured by your actions when the cameras are off. I show up, I always have, and I always will. And this is the same commitment that I make to other underrepresented communities, for 2SLGBTQIA+. They need our support. They and newcomers people with disabilities who struggle to access the services and programs that they all need to thrive. Low-income residents, seniors living on fixed incomes, too many people are being left behind. These community members, they're not just a box to be ticked in a policy. Inclusion isn't just about meeting some standard. It is the key that unlocks the economic opportunities that will raise all ships and build a higher standard of living for all of us. So let me tell you what else an inclusive city requires. Well, a capital city includes every region, not just those who live and work in a downtown. I will ensure equity between all regions of HRM, whether you're in Coal Harbour, Fall River, Cow Bay, the Prestons, Sheet Harbour, Timberley, Muscadabit Valley, Spryfield. There are over 200 distinct communities in our capital region, all deserving to grow stronger and live better. We're a capital region of many main streets. And the businesses on all those main streets deserve a chance to grow because your postal code should never determine the level or quality of service that you receive from your municipal government. Living better also means that we have leaders who don't run away from the challenges and the big problems, but run towards them. And as your mayor, I will work for more investments in emergency shelter for people experiencing homelessness. I will work for more mental health and addiction supports right here all throughout HRM, more job training, more supports to help people live better, including addressing food insecurity. This is important work. I know that police and fire services need our support to keep local families and businesses safe 
and protected, as do students and teachers in our schools. This has been a very challenging time in our schools with the recent bomb threats, the tragic death of a young boy at a shopping mall. Our schools must be safe spaces. And whether it's the threat of human trafficking, drugs, gangs, violence, we must do better. Because right now, we're failing our youth. And there should never be a compromise on public safety. Not today, not ever. That's my promise to you. Build smarter, grow stronger, live better. And in the days ahead, I'll be releasing information on my website at pamlovelace.ca. I invite all of you to join me. But first, I want to tell you a little bit about me, because you're wondering, well, who are you, Pam? Well, my track record is my story. I didn't build my career catering to anyone. I did not come to politics from a privileged position. I fought for my life, and I worked hard to get where I am today. I'm the example of a high school dropout who built my life on my terms. I became HRM's first, fourth deputy mayor out of 28 people because I worked for it. Just think about that. In 28 years, each year, there's a new deputy mayor, and I'm the fourth. A staggering. I wear my heart on my sleeve. I show up. I speak up, I work hard to fix the problems with community, with stakeholders, with our partners, so we can be a better local government, stronger and more nimble. I respect all candidates who step forward to put their name on a ballot. I'm very grateful to Mayor Savage's his mentorship, his friendship. I respect the offices of the Premier and the Prime Minister. But I expect and I embrace cooperation. Because in a world-class city, that's how things get done, through collective will and common belief that we can do more together. The job of the mayor is not just to manage or stay the course or just to get by. The job of a mayor is to envision the kind of city we could be and lay the foundation to get there. Because good enough is not good enough anymore. The threats to our future, our quality of life, and our economic well-being are far too great. I believe we must act now to make our vision a reality in the future. And my message to the young people of the Halifax Regional Municipality is, hang in there. Don't lose hope. Please don't stop believing that you have a future right here. And that's the kind of mayor that I'm going to be for HRM. It's the kind of mayor that we need and Halifax deserves. I will pull up my sleeves, I will get to work, and I will fight for you. To my team, I want to thank you for believing in better. Thank you all for stepping up to meet with our collective challenge to build smarter, grow stronger, and live better. I want to thank you so much for supporting me today and into the future as we step forward on October 19th to elect a new regional council. Merci beaucoup, Walaliag. Thank you so much.